one of these things. This is, this is a life-saving, life-extending device. And importantly, this is a device that can keep, keep you out of the hospital in, in your home. Nobody wants to be in the hospital in the emergency room or anything like that. Um, so these had fallen into disuse because polio had been essentially extinguished in this country. But then John Bach found an interesting thing, is that lots of families of patients of kids with muscular dystrophy finding these devices. And this was before the era of eBay. So they were just sort of tracking these things down in people's basements and hospitals. And they found that they were really successful in using them to stay well. So he went to uh, uh, Emerson. Uh, the, so Emerson was the company that made these in Waltham. And actually, G.E. Emerson was the guy that invented them, the founder of the company. And he convinced them to start making them again uh, in the 90s. And uh, we're fortunate in this country because Anybody with a neuromuscular disease can get one of those. It costs about $5,000. Uh, but we don't really have that much issue with insurers paying for them because they know it works really well. One thing I wanted to share with you, which is some exciting research that I just saw at a national meeting. My colleagues in Canada have been using a, a more primitive form of airway clearance because they can't get these paid for easily in Canada. Uh, what they use is an anesthesia bag, and they help people take really big breaths in, and they use it to assist cough. And what they found was, when people started using uh, the equivalent of these devices, it actually slowed the progression of the disease in terms of breathing muscle strength weakness. It's not really clear why that is, if it's the taking the big breaths or if the assisted cough. But I thought that was really important because my bias, you know if you've been in my clinic, is to start these if there's any sign of cough weakness at all. I want you to be skilled and to get used to it when you don't really need it. But I thought that it sort of highlighted the importance of even when you're not sick, using it, uh, uh, using it daily may actually help you keep some of your breathing muscle weakness and protect you um, down the line. So without further ado, I'd actually like to invite my test patient up here, Dr. Sen. Please, Dr. Sen, have a seat in the chair. I don't think I mean this, actually. As Brian pointed out in an email before this, he thinks I'm a loudmouth, so. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Is there any question? No. Very funny. So I'm actually going to pass around a handout. Again, because I think if, if you, if you, I'm a talking crowd, to not worry about um, you should learn to use this device if you're in the home with someone with muscular dystrophy or if you're a patient with muscular dystrophy or neuromuscular weakness. Uh, being really honest is important. I just dropped this on the floor and I like you enough. I'm going to clean it out. So privileged. So privileged. So, again, although this is a fancier enclosure than the one that we're in wooden boxes for vacuum motors, it's the same principle, okay? It pushes air in, sucks it out. There's nothing more complicated than that. There's a little bit nuance to the setup, but it's not that complicated. So actually, pull up the mask. Sure. I was going to take a detour and say something real quick. On the bottom. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why don't you just make a mistake? Thank you. The clean the machine. The clean the machine. And actually, there's something in the handout about this is sort of a metal thing, but there's actually something that you know about how you clean your tubing. The tubing you can get swapped out fairly frequently. The filter on here doesn't need to be changed that often. But um, you know, the main thing is the mask. I probably swap it out once, once a month. I just want to make sure I don't uh, pop Dr. Uh, Dr. Zen's lung here. Um, I'm just saying this in jest. If you're at the correct pressures, it's not going to it's not going to happen. But it would be uh, embarrassing if that were to happen. And I'm going to go a little bit bigger here. Um, just casually. <laughs> By the way. So I was exposed to this five years ago. I'm not a pulmonologist, but I know for a fact this is the greatest invention right up there with flush toilet, sliced bread, and credit card. I have families that have had sons going in and out of hospitals and ICUs with pneumonias. And one in particular in Colorado has three young men, 19 to 24, and they didn't have this until two years ago, and over the last two winters, the zip hospitalization. And we can't assume that everyone in the United States has access to this or even knows about it, because you'll assume your doctor might know about this. But we're really blessed in Boston that we have someone like Dr. Ketapari 
who really knows about this and really is advocating for it. If you live out in California or Texas, I cry for you. Your medical care is not the same across the country. And so Canada has a different problem, but the standard of care in the United States is still not exactly even far across states. So I can't sing your praises for really being a champion for this. But and I, I think that um, one thing uh, I, I mentioned on the handout as well, it's, it's really useful to have an oximeter in your home. We have a lot of difficulty getting them paid for if someone doesn't have documented low oxygen levels. My, you know, our patients in the clinic do not have lung disease. They've got problems with the, the bones and muscles around the lungs. So their oxygen levels should be normal. Uh, you know, essentially about 95%. Your early warning system you're running into trouble is a sap below 95%. And that's when you should really start using the machine more frequently. Um, it used to be, when we started the neuromuscular clinic about four years ago, you could buy one of these things for 100 bucks online, which for some families was a hardship. Now, you can get one for like 30 bucks on Amazon. So I, you know, in my, I just tell people, you know, just go out and buy one, carry it around your pocket, learn how to use it when you're well, and you check, you know, you don't have to check all the time, just check if someone's got a cough or a cold. Because you don't always know, uh, sometimes you can be surprised. So essentially what you do is you use a pressure mask like this. We can use a mouthpiece too, but it makes your cheeks puff up in sort of an amusing way. Maybe we'll do that later. Um, but what we do is, this, this is set to cycle. It gives you about two seconds in, hold, and then you cough out with expiration. Okay. So this is, these pressures aren't too bad. So big, big breath in. Oh, sorry. Big breath in. Sorry. How's it feel? Big breath in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It's see. If it, it feels it, it feels really weird, and if you're you know, a family member or a friend, try this out. Because you really want to, you know, you want to understand what this feels like. Now I tell people, is it fun to have a cough? Right? It's super not fun to have a cough. So using the cough assist is something that takes a little bit of getting used to. But uh, being skilled with this, I mean, we know for a fact that if you're skilled with your devices. Okay. If you, I mean, God forbid ever get sick and you get, uh, you know, you, you end up in an ICU, the predictor of success uh, in, in, in getting better quickly is how good you are and how used you, used you are to using these devices, okay? The time to learn is not when you're sick, it's to learn before you get sick. Hopefully you won't get sick at all. But the skill set of being comfortable with these different technologies will serve you well uh, uh, you know, even if the worst thing happens and you end up in the hospital. So, the other thing that they did in Canada, which I think is important to, to note, and I'm going to incorporate in our protocols, is the last page of your handout. It's what they call breath stacking, okay? Now, our bias has been is this machine gives you really big breaths in, um, and that's sort of breath stacking. But I figure, since we're talking about five to ten extra breaths a day, you know, you take a lot of breaths in a day, Having a couple of extra big breaths to consider the Canada, Canada protocol can't hurt. And to do that, we just we switch right down the machines on auto, so it pushes the air in, pushes it out, takes a break, and, and sort of cycles. We do it on manual. You use this little toggle here just to blow the air in. A little bit pressure here. So, what the way that you do this is, is that, first of all, it's important to have a signal for the person that is taking the big breath in to indicate when uh, when they are full. Because you, you you can sort of judge it by looking, but you don't want to make them uncomfortable. Of course they can always turn you can always turn the head as well. But what we do is I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna put this on your face. Now the signal is you're gonna blink when you feel full, okay? Take it take it just about a half breath in, okay? Half breath in, okay now I'm gonna give you an inhale. Just blink when you're full full. Okay, hold it as long as you can. Slowly breathe it out the first lift. Okay. You get the feel? It's, it's not rocket science here, but that's a stacked breath. 
why does that 